reason we come up here is that up here, up, up, on, up between here and Ballyhay is up here in Knockfad is commonly known or locally known as the rocks and uh, <coughs> it's just a little bit beyond our parish uh, in, the, in the town of Knockfad uh, there's a house there uh, for Shane, Shane Devlin and Josephine Devlin this is O'Connell living in it and uh, it seems to have gone past the radar of a lot of people but uh, uh, there was a, an Archbishop of Ireland, an, of all Ireland, he was the Church of Ireland, Archbishop of all Ireland, was born in that house in 1854 and he became the um, Archbishop of Ireland in, uh, in 19, um, oh, 1911. He was Archbishop of Ireland from 1911 to 1920, the, the partisan Archbishop of Ireland and his seat or, uh, was in Armagh. And uh, in the front garden of the O'Connell household, there's a tree, there was a tree set, and it's there t today, and it's known as the Primate's Tree. He was, he, he was the Primate Crozier was his name, Archbishop Crozier. And he had a distinguished career in the Tisical uh, life before he became the Archbishop. And uh, <clears throat> I've been trying to research him a bit, and I can find very little about him, but he was, uh, he was uh, the Primate during the time of the troubles here, and all the troubles up in the north. And I know he was very friendly with Carson, and very friendly with the Unionist side uh, at the time. So that's in, in Nukfad. It's actually technically across the border in Bally Hayes, but uh, 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 we just said it mentioned that. Further down, coming down towards the village in the townland of Ardromagolian, there was a lady called Brady M. Uh, Smith Brady, and uh, <coughs> she worked in the Anglo Celt, in the editorial room, I think, in the Anglo Celt, and she wrote a lot on the history of, of uh, Bally Hayes and, uh, and that area. And she was particularly fond of the townland of Crossforge, which by the, as the crow flies is not too far across the hills here. And apparently in the 4th and 5th centuries when St. Patrick, uh, before St. Patrick came to Ireland, or when he did go to Ireland, there was a, tra a transformation from the burial in the old pagan style to the uh, Christian style. And in the old pagan graves in Crossforge, she found uh, clay pottery. That was uh, 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 that was made in the uh, uh, Ohadromagolian. Uh, Ohadromagolian was the, the centre of this uh, uh, clay pottery works, and uh, she described some of the items. She said that in the graveyards there were found uh, there were uh, uh, furniture containing food, furniture ornaments, uh, domestic utensils, milk vessels, and pots. They were all fabricated here. So there was a level of craftsmanship in our district going back now to, this is in the 4th or 5th century. And if we swing completely away from here and down to Orney, uh, which we won't be going here today, but uh, in Orney there was a, a, a brooch found that uh, dates to the 9th century. It was a silver brooch and it was admired by Queen Victoria. And as a result of it being admired by Queen Victoria, it was called uh, the Victorian brooch or the Queen's boat, sorry. And uh, so there was a level of craftsmanship, not just in Aldrin Medullion, there was a level of craftsmanship down uh, just uh, across the river in Orney. So this was long before there were computer graphics or before there was any uh, uh, schools or um, uh, digital, digital age. Well, coming back down from there, just, just above here, a few Boylan brothers, I understand, have built a house either side of the road. And on the left hand side, Matthew was built at home. And on that field, that is, was known as the horse field. And that field, uh, Andy told me uh, a couple of years ago, in the middle of that field, there's a stone, right in the centre, a raised stone. And that's where this temperance uh, preacher, Father Matthew, came here in November, uh, November of 1840. And he came here over a two day period, and there were 60,000 pilgrims. Uh, or 60,000, uh, what would you call them, people who wanted to give up drinking? I <laughs> 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 had to get the big <laughs> There hasn't been a drop drank in bridge to the bridge since. <laughs> but anyway, over the, over the, over the two day period, uh, there were 60,000 uh, people came to get the pledge. And uh, uh, that time, whenever you read any of the stuff that around that time, any of the police reports, there was nothing but illicit dis distillations all over the place. 
So people were making people were making drink in their homes and uh, on their farms and every place else. So it must have been a, it must have been a very widespread uh, problem. And over the two days, uh, he, there were sixty thousand, and a lot of the notoriety, the nobility of the of the of the of the, of the locality came on that day, although the bishop didn't come, he sent a letter of apology. And on that night he stayed in, uh, we'll be talking about a man called John Riley in a minute, he occupied where Andrew Boylan's home is now, and uh, he was a very prominent citizen, we'll talk about him in a minute, but anyway, on that night he stayed uh, in, 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 in Boylan's house, then Riley's house, and on, the night, on that night he presented a, 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 a medal to Mrs. Riley, Elizabeth Riley, she was a very devout lady, who actually is, 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 is buried outside the chapel, uh, we, we'll come to that again later on. So just this road, uh, there's one other aspect of this road here is the, um, is the railway. The railway went along here at, on Derry Gara. And in 1874, <coughs> there was an application made to the railway company to have a railway station here in Butler Bridge. And if I think we were at that And uh, it was torn down it was torn down because uh, it was torn down because they said that there wasn't sufficient traffic. But if if they had been getting the uh, the uh, station, there's no doubt that the station would have been planned to have been up that up that road there because it would have been the most proximate place for villagers to to attend uh, to, to to access it. So uh, we have the railway line just above here, which is now obviously closed since 1959. And uh, we had the clay pottery, we've had uh, the Archbishop, and we had the uh, visit of Father Matthew. That visit of Father Matthew wasn't just here to us, like he didn't want a mill town of a Torbert or Newton Butler. It was a regional um, uh, uh, visit. So they came, the 60,000, they came from several counties. And in 1840, just before the famine. So that's all we have to say about here. So we'll, if you don't mind, we'll head back down, down to violence.